In this video, we're going to find out how we can join numbers to strings. Hi, I'm Philip Burton of filecats.co.uk. So we've got here an example. Maybe we have a column that has a house number and I want to join it with the road that they live on. So Wiltshire Boulevard here and a space in the middle. But unfortunately, when I execute that, it fails. Conversion failed when executing the string of var char value, Wiltshire Boulevard, to data type int. So what's happening? Well, you might think that the computer would convert the number three into a string. So we have this, and then we've got three Wiltshire Boulevard. But no, because we have got something that's a number, it's going to try and convert everything else into a number. And obviously Wiltshire Boulevard doesn't easily get converted into a number. Now, in another video, we've seen how we can use the concat function to do this conversion. So here, if I put in all of my values, then the computer implicitly converts this number three into a string so that we can have a successful concatenation or joining. But that's called implicit conversion. In other words, the computer works out what you need and then gives it to you, but doesn't always get it right. So here it is trying to implicitly convert a varchar or string into an int or number. So how can we do an explicit conversion? How can we say, well, I want this number three to be converted into a string? Well, there are three different functions. And in this video, we're going to have a look at the simplest of these functions, which is the cast function. So the cast says, okay, we've got this expression and I want to change it into another different data type. So you can see the syntax here, cast, my expression, the word as, and then the data type, in this case, varchar brackets 20. So let's execute that. And you can see here, we have got three Wilshire Boulevard. So what we have done is an explicit conversion. Let's take another example. Let's say I wanted to convert the number three and the string three. So if I used implicit conversion, then the string gets converted to a number and then it's three plus three, which is six. But suppose I wanted three three. Well, I could just put a cast around here as before and run that. And then we'll have two strings joined together, three, three. But suppose I wanted a particular number. So I wanted six, but I didn't want to do it as an implicit conversion. I wanted to say, I want this to be this particular type. Well, I could put the cast around here and say, change it to an int or a small or whatever sort of data type I wanted. Now we can also convert strings into numbers and dates. So let's have a string here. So 2nd of February 2025, so that is a string. I want to convert that into a date. So I can cast that as date. Could also use date time, date time two, and all the rest. And you can see now it's been displayed as 2025-02-02. So what I call Japanese format. It's a format that's also used in China and Korea and other places. Now, what happens if the cast is going to create an error? So suppose I wanted to say, hi there, and I convert that into a date. Well, unsurprisingly, hi there doesn't work as a date. So you can see conversion failed. So we get an error. Suppose we didn't want an error. Suppose we wanted something a bit more gentle, maybe null. Well, I can do this by, instead of using the function cast, using the function try underscore cast. So it just tries it, sees if it works. And if it doesn't, then it gives a null rather than a big error. Now, if the cast does work, then try underscore cast gives exactly the same result as cast. So I generally use try underscore cast whenever I use cast, except if I wanted to make sure I can port it into another version of SQL, say Oracle SQL, which I don't think has a try underscore cast, or if I wanted an error to be raised if any of the data is incorrect. 
Now, I should point out that cast only works for your particular locale. So in my case, English. So if I put in the 2nd of April 2025, that's fine. If I try to put in the Spanish version, Abril, then I'm afraid I will get, in this case, a null because I'm using tricast. There is a way around this using a different function called pass. We'll be looking at that in another video. Now, you can also convert numbers into numbers. Why would you want to do that? Well, suppose I wanted the number 3.5 and I wanted to convert that into an integer. Now, there are other ways of doing this, but I can use cast to convert it into an integer. So here we have the number 3. So there are other ways, like, for instance, using the floor function that would get that as well. Now, do be careful. This will not convert the string 3.5 into an integer. It will give me an error. So if you wanted 3.5 as a string to be converted into an integer, first of all, you need to convert it into something else. For instance, maybe a decimal. So that is something that 3.5 can be converted into. And then we need to convert what's left into an integer. So that now converts a string into an integer, but it does it through a floating point data type. So cast, it allows you to convert an expression from one data type to another and is the simplest of the three conversions that we're going to be looking at that you can use. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you like it, then please click the like button and why not subscribe and click the bell next to it so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you for watching this and keep learning.